Okay, here's what they're having to say from New York University. And um, it's a new discovery, fills long missing gap in evolutionary history. And they found these teeth. It appears the upper jaw of an infant, Eumachida papadakissus, credit Terry Harrison, who I just contacted, New York University Department of Anthropology. Now, he's saying that the earliest given fossil had been found by a team of researchers filling a long missing evolutionary gap in history of apes, which they say we came from apes. The study, which was published in the Journal of Human Evolution, focuses on the hylobatid family of apes comprises 20 species of living gibbons that are found throughout tropical Asia from northeastern India to Indonesia. Now, so he's, what they found was, uh, this is what it says, high blood odd, high, high low batids fossil remains are very rare. Most specimens are isolated teeth. They find one tooth. The fragmentary jaw bones found in cave sites southern China and southeastern Asia dating back to back no more than two million years ago. And one of the papers, this is from Terry Harrison, one of the paper's authors, this new find extends the fossil record back to seven to eight million years ago and more specifically enhances our understanding of the evolution of this family of apes. Well, I have specimens here. This is DNA tested and CAT scanned and it's a human lung. I discovered a new process of petrification of soft tissues. This is also this is a, 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 what we call the no-toes, and we have a bunch of these. They're human feet almost, but they have springs inside. So we have a lot of things to, to demonstrate that geology and archaeology and anthropology, all of that stuff and fossil determination is not based on bones and teeth. It should be based on complete body parts and heads and everything, like this goose. And I discovered the process which is nucleophilic substitution of transition metal elements that causes this type of soft tissue petrification. A bone does not have to be a white, shiny bone. That's a bone. That is a, absolutely a bone. Anybody in their right mind that understands anatomy will know that. This is now a rock. The only last part to be a bone is that right there. That little tiny white spot is left on this bone. And that's the marrow in the center. But everything turns to feldspar. See all this stuff? It's feldspar because that is the transition of collagens. Collagens make membranes. Membranes are coatings. Even the goose, his feathers, you see the feather pattern there? Even this goose. His feathers are nothing more than collagen. They make up a collagen coating that coats his body. That's what keeps us protected from the whole rest of the world. That collagen is, is the key, but it bonds with aluminum silicates, which is a, is a, a chemistry that was in the waters of the, of the flood when this happened. And then they all turn flat on one side because they died laying like this in the flood waters. The same thing with this lung. DNA tested, and it's human. And see it? Flat as you can be on it. It died like that. And the reason they're outside of the bodies is because there was a warm, well, it was a hot boiling flood. And it was because we almost got impacted by Venus. And when that happened, it, it, the collision into our atmosphere caused the, the whole thing to heat up and burn up. And it, it boiled the oceans because for seven days it approached with the, the brilliance of the sun. It just keep, continued to cook everything. People jumped in the waters to try to save themselves. All recorded history. Read Velikovsky. Everybody in the entire world had the same story and it's only 3500 years ago all of this stuff was above the ground they're talking two million years now we've gone back seven million eight million years i just like to talk to somebody and say well, well let's explain this let's talk about the things that we can see other than instead of look going around looking for a tooth a tooth does not tell you a whole lot this tells you a lot more Okay, my friends, I'm certainly hoping they'll engage with me because I have some very solid evidence. Listen to this, what they did. The Journal of Human Evolution study also found that Capi Ranbenagonarnas, which has been claimed 
to be an earlier species of hyboid based on a single tooth, a single molar tooth from India is not really a hyboid after all, but a member of a more primitive group of primates that are not closely related to modern day apes. This, they're basing this on one or two teeth and a little piece of jaw. And then they're coming up with this conclusion. How they ever got here, I have no idea. Genetic studies indicate that the high blood or batids diverge from the lineage leading to the great apes and humans 17 to 22 million years ago. So there's still 10 million year gap in the fossil record that needs to be filled, Harrison cautions. With the continued exploration promising fossil sites, in China and elsewhere like Connecticut, USA, it is hoped that additional discoveries will help fill these critical gaps in the evolutionary history. Yes, he's in the, he's in the human evolution, in the, um, the history of, of our species. And really the history of everything is all tied together. But what I was showing, that's, that's history. And I would like to have it looked at. It's time. It's time now. I have DNA tests. I have CAT scans. I have specimens. They're looking at a single tooth and making these kind of conclusions. Very, very difficult to accept that and to disregard the information that I have presented. It's just not right. Okay, so you've seen their claims. I said warm greetings, my friend. I sent this to Terry Harrison, who's making these claims. And I said a rare humanoid-ish species discovered in Connecticut, USA, which is very close to him. He's in New York. I saw your piece on the missing link. I have a specimen I would like you to examine. Actually, we have several of the feet from a human ancestor, possibly, but the toes are built into the feet. Also, the bones leading to the toes appear to be springs, not normal bones, but they would work like tendons, it appears to me. I am willing to cooperate in any way to get the discovery studied. Will you help? I am very interested to speak or Zoom or communicate in any fashion you would like. I simply want to get an expert opinion. I hope to hear from you quickly. I'm doing a video today highlighting your discovery. I have 164,000 subs, so Hopefully we're going to get some interest in this and make this known. It's really about time. This has been quite some time that it's been ignored. And now with this new discovery of our human evolution, I think this should be taken into consideration. All right. Thank you.